Okay, now we're starting to get more crowded in our construction. Uh, we'll be looking at the pectoralis major in its two parts, the clavicular and the sternal portion, that actually twist around each other and insert on an anterior proximal part of the humerus, um, the lateral lip of the bicipital groove. And around the back, uh, these don't seem related, but they insert in a very similar place. We have the teres major, which is a small version of the tissimus dorsi, because both run parallel, teres major from the inferior angle of the scapula, the tissimus dorsi from the lumbodorsal um, fascia down here in the lumbar region. Both converge, go medial and then anterior to insert just inside the pec major. So both of these muscles, pec major and latissimus and the teres major, all will adduct and internally rotate. They're also um, mostly um, extensor muscles from a flexed position. On the same side, we'll be putting a deltoid, another muscle that has distinct parts and distinct functions for each part. We have anterior, middle, and posterior deltoid. So these are all either originating or, or inserting in a very similar place around the clavicle uh, and lateral angle of the scapula. On the other side, we'll be looking at the subscapularis. I'll turn this inside out. That's not an anatomical, anatomically possible movement. Uh, but there's the subscapularis coming from the costal surface of the scapula. Remember, the serratus anterior is attaching here. This goes medially and anteriorly to the humerus. So it's another internal rotator. Just opposite that is the infraspinatus and teres minor, which come from the opposite side of the scapula, go to the opposite side of the humerus, and serve as external rotators. And then above all of that is the supraspinatus, uh, attaching to the very top and lateral aspect of the humerus. It's purely an abductor. So we have our rotator cuff muscles now, subscapularis in front, supraspinatus on top, infraspinatus on the back, and teres minor on 